Early onset cancer, turbo cancer, what is going on? What is driving the increased prevalence of cancer? In today's show, we're going to talk about a recently published paper titled One Year Risks of Cancer Associated with the Thingy That We Shall Not Name, a large population-based cohort study in South Korea. This was not published in some QAnon conspiracy journal, my friends. This was published in an open access biomarker research, which is part of the BMC uh, network of journals here. Really interesting. Drawing upon data from over 8 million subjects between the years 2021 and 2023, finding a strong statistical and independent association with status of the immunization and increased risk of certain types of cancer. Now, why are we talking about this now? I think it's important for those of us who have been exposed to the pathogen or the thingy to make appropriate lifestyle changes so as to optimize the health of your body. Because many of you, you know, had to follow the guidelines so as to not get you know terminated from your job or to stay enrolled in your university or school. And um, I think it's important to know that there is this independent association with immunization back in the COVID era uh, and an increased risk of cancer. I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm just trying to uh, help you make ed educated uh, lifestyle decisions. So let's talk about what this data uh, found. They stratified people for based upon their immunization status, those that received the jab versus those that didn't. Now comparing uh, the diagnosis of cancer uh, between the different groups using what's known as multivariate Cox proportional hazard ratios. Uh, there was a, a significant increased risk for those that received two or more immunizations when it comes to certain types of cancer, particularly thyroid cancer represented a 35% increased risk in the prevalence. Gastric cancer comparing unimmunized people to uh, immunized people, a 33% increased risk. Colorectal cancer, 28% increased risk. Lung cancer is particularly scary for a lot of different reasons, uh, mostly because uh, most lung cancer is particularly uh, metastatic and, and has really poor uh, prognosis. The hazard ratio here was 1.53, meaning there was a 53% increased risk in lung cancer when comparing unimmunized compared to those who received the jab. Breast cancer was a modest 1.197 or about 20% increased risk. Now, prostate cancer, uh, showed a 69% increase risk of cancer one year post immunization. So scary stuff. We're going to really dive into this, uh, not to scare anyone, not to make you ruminate, uh, but to really help you double down on lifestyle choices uh, henceforth for all of us to help prevent uh, early onset cancer, cancer at any age. And we'll talk about the gender bifurcation here. It turns out that women uh, show the highest above baseline increased risk of cancer based upon immunization status. Now, before we go on, I just want to appreciate you all for being here, for watching this video. I thank you for subscribing, hitting that like button. And I want to thank this video show sponsor, the good folks over at bondcharge.com, the makers of an array of amazing health tools. I've been using their blue light filtering glasses for many years. They have an awesome sleep mask. And one of my personal favorite tools that they offer is the at-home infrared sauna blanket. My friends, you know, sauna therapy is amazing. It's one of the best ways to improve circulation, to calm down your mind before you go to bed in the evening, to help relax, and most importantly, to help you sweat out and detoxify persistent organic pollutants, heavy metals, and endocrine disrupting chemicals that are in our air, food, water, clothing, furniture, cosmetics. These things are everywhere, and the best way to get them out of your body, because most of us have these in our body, is to sweat with exercise and with the sauna. But we know that access to a good sauna is expensive. It's hard for those of you, especially if you live in a studio or apartment or don't you know, belong to an expensive gym. So thankfully, Bonchards makes an amazing at-home sauna blanket that is among the hottest in the industry. It gets up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This is an amazing tool that you can use anywhere, at grandma's house over Christmas, or you can do this in your studio, your flat, your condo, your apartment. Your kids will like it as well. I would encourage you to save by using the link in the description below or going to bondcharge.com for Josh H-I-H. Again, they're at home in Fred's on a blanket. It's hands down the best in the market, the hottest and the lowest EMF. Okay, so definitely check them out and support their company. Now, let's get back to this paper. Again, I think it's really interesting. Uh, and who should really double down on their lifestyle strategy, minimizing artificial uh, sugar intake, refined sugar, processed foods, you know, 
obviously balancing circadian rhythm health and sleep. We know sleep and circadian sleep-wake cycle, circadian rhythm is really important for helping to prevent cancer. Well, it turns out that women probably should be really interested in optimizing their lifestyle because the risk, the, the relative incidence rate for women comparing unvaccinated women to vaccinated women is actually quite high. As you can see here in figure 1D, uh, what you see here is the, the relative incidence rate is quite high in vaccinated women compared to unvaccinated women. And of course, the lowest incidence of cancer is in unvaccinated males. Now, could there be some confounding variables at play here? Yeah, I'm not really sure because most people that ran out and got multiple doses of the immunization and so forth would, by all accounts, be considered you know, healthy and eating healthy, at least according to mainstream media and public health experts and so on. But there clearly is a statistical association here uh, finding an increased risk of cancer in those who received the COVID-19 immunization compared to those uh, who do not. And they did parse this out based upon immunization subtype. And it turns out that the adenovirus vector immunizations uh, had the highest increased risk for overall cancer, uh, about a 50% increase compared to those who did not receive any immunization. The mRNA-based vaccines were associated with more of a modest, uh, about 0.25 or 25% increased relative risk uh, comparing those who received the mRNA-based immunization versus those who received none. So I think this is quite interesting because I think a lot of people had the perception that, well, if I get Johnson & Johnson, you know, it's not the mRNA. Uh, that actually was linked with a uh, two-fold increased relative risk compared to those who received no immunization. Now, let's also go on to table one. The risk of cancers for the match vaccination cohort according to booster doses of the immunization. This is really scary. Uh, pancreatic cancer, this is associated with a 125% increased relative risk of pancreatic cancer when comparing those who receive booster doses compared to those who were unimmunized. Now, that is staggering because we all know the story of Steve Jobs and how pancreatic cancer metastasized throughout his body. And he had, at the time, I think was among the top five wealthiest people in the world. You know, all of that wealth and access to uh, medicine could not even stay, save Steve Jobs. And that's particularly scary. So um, if you've received multiple boosters, I would strongly suggest going on a low-carb diet, making sure you're tightening up your exercise, your stress management, circadian rhythm, sleep-wake cycles, and beyond. Uh, also, gastric cancers, a 23% increased relative risk for those who received uh, multiple boosters. And leukemia, kind of scary here, uh, a 56% relative uh, risk here uh, comparing the, the boosted versus uh, unvaccinated. So... Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sharing this information to scare you. This is not anti-science. I'm just reporting what Kim et al. Uh, found after looking at data on 8 million people here. This was just published in the month of September of the year 2025. So in conclusion, the investigators say COVID-19 vaccination could be associated with an increased risk of six specific, six specific cancer types, including thyroid, gastrointestinal, colorectal, lung, breast, and prostate cancers. Notably, the COVID-19 vaccination cancer risk was likely more elevated among individuals under the age of 65, except in individuals with prostate cancer. So folks, I mean, I don't know about you, but this notion of early onset cancer prior to COVID, I don't even know if that was in the zeitgeist, uh, in our vernacular. Did we even talk about early onset cancer? I've never even heard of such a thing until after COVID. And so I just think we really need to weigh the pros and cons going forward. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Is preventing an infection, particularly because as you know, individuals under the age of 65 were statistically very unlikely to die or have severe COVID. So why did we mandate this for many people under the age of 65, particularly children uh, and college students? Now, the investigators say, given the observational associations between COVID-19 vaccination and cancer in incidents by age, sex, and vaccination type, further research is needed to determine whether specific vaccination strategies may be optimal for populations in need of COVID-19 vaccination. So yeah, they're saying we should, have, we should going forward and possibly in hindsight have had more of a uh, risk stratification rollout, meaning for those that are really morbidly obese, have severe type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure, differential uh, vaccination 
uh, should have been possibly uh, part of the strategy instead of making children and college age students and working age individuals get this or they get fired from their jobs. I mean, that is, that is just absolutely insane. So uh, I wanted to share this with you all. Uh, it's not doom and gloom. It's really to help you better understand whether you should double down on your, I think all of us should, because no one ever wants to get cancer. Um, we should be optimizing uh, metabolic health. You know, obviously we know there's a, a strong co-occurrence with poor metabolic health and cancer incidence and prevalence and severity uh, and outcomes, sleep-wake cycles. We know that people that work the night shift, the so-called graveyard shift, it's called that for a reason. So we should be more mindful about our sleep uh, and beyond. So I would like to know what you all think. I appreciate you tuning in to the very end of this video. Thanks for Boncharge for sponsoring this video, and we'll catch you on a future one down the road.